Hi friends, I'm Olga Kirsch and welcome to my studio. Today I prepared such a treat for you guys and we are going to paint Plumeria flower, this tropical beautiful flower in pink colors and I do hope you will enjoy the process. So let's start. For painting Plumeria I prepared already a mixture of quinacridone rose and just a hint of permanent orange to get this very diluted and red pinky tones. And let's start painting Plumeria with the first petal. I use very very diluted watercolor. And I paint the first petal and very specific about Plumeria is that it has very thick um, um, how to say uh, a very thick petal around and now I'm painting this I'm painting this uh, border I remove some of the color from this petal. I paint second petal and they will go and overlapping one into each other and all connects in the middle. So to make this feeling of thickness, I step a little bit of the petal and paint just an outline. And I add some colors to the center and again with very diluted and with very very diluted watercolor I paint another petal which is slightly underneath and with slightly bold and darker mixture I go approximately from the middle of the petal I step aside I leave some white area and come back to the center of the flower you probably already see what's happening that that's how we create in these overlapping of petals and once again I paint in the petal, which is here, that's underneath this one. I paint it with very, very diluted color. With the, with the bottom of the brush, I try to remove a little bit of color here on the edges of petals. And I create this thickness. I step aside, I leave some white area and I connect with uh, approximately with the very middle of the petal and to avoid this very certain line on the top I just um, drag out the color a little bit with wet and dry brush. Now comes the last one. I um, made maybe some mistake in the beginning. I did not um, leave enough of white space here. So now I'm taking a paper towel and I go around here and let's see how I, I will <laughs> manage with this situation. Anyway, I'm painting a petal. I'm painting a petal. I'm overlapping. It's okay. I want to create nice shape here. I distribute all the colors. Uh, it's um, <laughs> maybe I did not really think it through, but at the end we will get even more beautiful result. I'm pretty sure with watercolor. If something went out of your hands went not on the plan, it probably means that at the end you will get something even nicer than you planned. And now I step aside, I leave 
a little bit of area here not very white but pale pink and connect and actually i like it very much because it creates a nice shade here with plumeria flowers it's um very very uh, common that the middle of the flower has dark very um dark bold color sometimes it's yellow sometimes it's uh, more pink we are painting pink flowers today so i go with with the second layer i um create this dark dark mi middle and you could even take some colors right from your palette to make it very bold and with very bold color you create this depth in the middle of the flower like this one it's a lot of shades here and you could correct a little bit these white edges and the darker part should be underneath this white one because uh, this fold it creates some shade underneath it so don't forget to add some contrast right here i wash my brush i dry my brush with paper towel not very much but uh, i keep it relatively dry and i just drag out the color from the middle and that's i how i create some vines in the flower i just drag out the color with clean and dry brush do not forget to um, clean your brush after a few few strokes better clean and dry your brush again otherwise it will uh, just bring unnecessary color unnecessary dirt into the painting and the last one and always move uh, along the shape of the petal which is a little bit round and your moves should be also that round so one plumeria flower is ready i would like to add the second one which look a little bit um which we could see from from the side I take my very diluted um, Queen Acridon Rose. It's a very diluted Queen Acridon Rose just with a hint of orange. Uh, if you do not like to mix colors, it's so completely fine to paint just with the colors from your palette. Um, or if you like to. Um, Mix colors, that's uh, really, you could try so many different things. I think, uh, in my opinion, what's important in painting that you find your comfort, your pleasure, and um, what will be important, that it's your creativity, not rules which you might hear. And that's how we paint in our bloom area. And if we see it a little bit from from side, the shapes of um, the petals will differ. And right now, I actually I more paint outlines than the flower itself. Mm. but what's important that the middle of the flower 
stays very bright. That's why I'm taking color right from the palette, right from the pen, right from watercolor pen, and I add this bold color. And I add a little bit along the edges. If you do not feel comfortable with painting with big brush, take a smaller brush. I, for example, really would like to switch to a small, thinner brush um, because I would like to create here this curve, this edge. One, two, and you see how lovely it looks uh, with the contrast. Once you add this bright middle, the, all the flower looks very different. All very, very, very different. And I'd like to add some contrast just here. And, here. and with dry and clean brush, I distribute Uh, the um, darker color from the middle to the to the edges and that's how I create um, vines of, of the flower. What's important is to move your brush along the shape of the petal. For example, this petal looks like this and when you paint you imagine that you paint on your palm with this um, move, like you're painting on your palm, probably. <laughs> like here you could see slightly better, and I hope uh, you could understand what, what I mean. Sorry guys, if sometimes I'm maybe not that clear. Um, another flower is ready. I would like to add some shades to the bottom one and to divide it from from the other petal from the other flower just like this uh, as uh, the third step I would like to paint a branch with with the bud on on the top and for painting branch, I'm taking chromium oxide red. Oh, <laughs> sorry, chromium oxide green, of course. Chromium oxide green. It has a nice dusty, dusty feeling, which I, I like in greenery very much. I imagine how my branch will go, I guess it will go around like this, some nice curves, some nice green place for future boards, and this. Uh, we will be back to this green area later on. Right now, I would like to paint some um, plumeria buds, which looks amazing. Uh, let me check if you, yes, you could see. Um, to paint the buds, I prepare the outline and I make this brush stroke to imitate the spiral feeling because the bud um, close in this spiral move and that's why it, it looks really really it is very beautiful it is a very beautiful flower actually I think all flowers are really beautiful. It's very unlikely that you tell me, oh, Olga, you know, this is the ugly flower. I, I hate, I hate these flowers. They are all horrible. 
Mm. But if you have something, yes, you could <laughs> tell me. I am curious um, to hear about your favorite flowers and maybe your unfavorite flowers. And we create more. I wash my brush. I dry my brush. I uh, a little bit rug out the color from from the bud, uh, from 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 the borders, from sides, and that's how I create this nice volume. And let's paint the third one. I suggest it will be a slightly smaller. It's nice to have variety. It will be more, more closed, more young bud. So I will add some green color to the, to the bud to show that it is more closed one, more in the green stage. And I soften a little bit these edges with clean dry brush I remove some um, colors. Maybe I will make this one go with green. Um, the you know, branch um, uh, has some knots on it. And now I add oxid red to it or uh, to give this wooden a texture thinning just here this mm. I would like I I first I imagine how the branch goes and then I just proceed with um, some wiggling of of my brush because I uh, never paint a branch like a straight line. I mean, sometimes, yes, of course, it, it makes sense. Uh, but usually uh, um, branches, especially this wooden, um, they have some knotty texture and it's nice to, to imitate and get some uneven parts so this flower it's also it, it connects with the main stem it's a small little detail but it adds its uh, nice feeling around i think it would be nice to add one more one more small branch here and Put some some very green bud, which shows us that it it will have <laughs> its time soon. One more. All these little details they are not complicated to paint, but they really add um, artistic feeling, unique feeling, and feeling of complexity into your painting so don't um, don't forget don't um, miss that part these small little details they enrich your painting a lot um, what I would like to paint now is it's actually I like it very much like this <laughs> but some challenge <laughs> would be nice um, and I want to paint few green leaves uh, in plumeria flowers they are long, long relatively narrow um, kind of remind me rhododendrons flowers maybe uh, more narrow and more long and that's I take my bigger brush I will start, I think I will start from from the top and go to the bottom so I could see where better. 
I start with the tip of the brush. I create the shape of the leaf. It's um, now it's not that impressionistic style in which I love to paint. It needs some precise here and some attention. Uh, the most important part is to make the line natural, not like we started um, here and then finish there. It should have very natural move. For example, we could see this leaf in between and here we could see a part of this leaf and even a little bit of here and I imagine it goes like this and it connects and it connects with with the stem even with brownish color one one leaf is lovely but let's paint the second one I would like to paint it from the same point and like this it's uh, it looks very easy I'm painting without um, sketch without uh, pencils outlines but what's important to create the picture to have a picture to have a vision in your head so once you touch the paper you know where lines should go so this one is slightly easier because it has a big bigger area around i paint with um, the bottom part of my brush and i leave this white stroke to imitate the middle line and I really want to make this leaf go a little bit curvy like this and at the end oh, it's probably more like root of the leaf I add some darker brown mm. let me have a look I it looks very very pretty uh, with the thinner brush I, I use the same green but a slightly bold I add some extra strokes to show the thickness of the flower or oh, of the leaf, I'm sorry, the leaf. Mm. Like this, and some some strokes. It's small little details. Um, if we were botanical artists, we would have to paint all these small vines on each leaf. But for painting uh, like this, more um, impressionistic painting, loose painting, it's enough to show just a few. And that's enough to create that feeling. And so uh, the flower would be recognizable and we show some of its features. And that's really, 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 really enough. One, two, three. I, I like how it is now. The last small little detail I would like to add is to make the middle of this, of the upper flower, more obvious. So I take the darkest possible uh, pink. It's um, crop lock just from the palette. And I add just some depth to the flower, to one and to the other one, just a little bit. And this is our plumeria is ready. 
thank you so much for painting with me for watching this video i'm looking forward to see your plumeria flowers tag me on instagram olga.kelsch subscribe my channel let me know in comments which flower you would like to paint next and see you next time bye bye